everything that we're doing today is just using all of the stuff we've been doing up to this point so that we can put numbers in proper order, right? And remember the last time I, I, I canceled out the greater than, less than, you guys will be able to do that today. You'll have some on your, on your homework sheet. Um, but once we do this stuff today, you should be able to understand it pretty well, right? So the idea is putting everything in order. We're going to simplify it so everything's in the same form, right? And then we're going to see which comes first. And we're going to put them in order from least to greatest. So the smallest number up to the biggest number. And so we have to look at all these. Look, I have a fraction. I have a scientific notation. I have a square root. I have a percent. And then I have another fraction. Crazy, right? But we have to look at, well, what's two thirds? What if we just put everything in decimal form, right? Well, two thirds is the same as two divided by three, right? Can you use a calculator for this? Absolutely. Two divided by three equals point six seven right this one right here we're just moving this decimal right we have six point two times ten to the negative three which means we're going to move the decimal three points and we would have point zero zero six two the square root of 40 i don't know what the square root of 40 is right but i have a calculator it tells me what the square root of 40 is. And that is going to be 6.32. I think there's some repeat to it. But 60%, well, if you remember 60%, we have that decimal. And we just move it over two places. And it becomes comma 0 0.60. And our last one, 16 divided by 25. I don't know what that is, but I know that I could go 16 divided by 25 on my calculator and find out that it is 0.64. So it says I have to order each of these numbers from least to greatest. Which one is the smallest number? Deli, which one of these is the smallest number? Yeah, I asked you which one of those was the smallest number. All right, well, which one is the smallest number? We've got all the, well, we have 0 0.67, 0 0.0062, 6.32, 0 0.60, and 0 0.64. Which one is the smallest of all of those? Yeah. 0 0.0062 is our smallest. So this is going to be number one, right? You can always tell by all these zeros. Anytime you have that 10 to the negative 3, that those 10 to the negatives are going to be pretty darn small, right? When we look at our next one, it looks like our next one is going to be 0 0.60. And then we've got 0 0.64. And then we've got 0.67. We can see the numbers getting better, bigger, right? Four. And then clearly the one that's a whole number is the biggest. So if I was going to put these in order, it would be 6.2 times 10 to the negative 3. And then it would be 60%. And then number three is 16 over 25. 
And number four, oh, the sun is shining like bright in my eye right now. It's two thirds. And then number five is the square root of 40. So that's all you're doing. You're finding what order to put these numbers in. Um, let's look at this next one. We've got seven fifths. I don't know. Like I can look at all these and I don't know, right? I have to put them in some kind of a form. I think decimal is the best way to do it because it's the one that's easiest to get everything into. So I'm going to go seven divided by five and I get 1.4. Then I've got 1.6 times 10 to the one power. That's just moving the decimal one spot. So that's 16. The square root of 144 is conveniently 12. Don't have to work hard on that. 12 times 12 is 144. 120%. Well, we're moving the decimal two places, so that is 1.2. And the last one is 10 squared. That's 10 times 10, which is 100. So if we look at this, it makes it fairly easy, right? We've got our 1.2 is our smallest, so that's our number 1. And then 1 1.4 we've got is number 2. And then we go, okay, well, 12 is smaller than 16, so that's number 3. And 16 is smaller than 100, so that's our number 4. And that's our number 5. And so now we know the order to put them in, right? Starting with 1.2, so 120% is our smallest. Our number 2 is 7 fifths. Our number three is 12. So what was 12? The square root of 144. What is number four? 1.6 times 10 to the one power. And then our last one is 10 squared. Does that make sense? It's not very hard, right? The hardest part is just doing the conversion so you know what each number is, right? The rest of it is just knowing how to what number is smaller than the other. Um, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to show you something else as far as comparing, because I know that it's on your homework worksheet. Like, I've got all these pages of stuff. Uh, then we can go from greatest to least, but that's no harder, right? Going from greatest to least just means we're putting them in backwards order. Um, but let's look at this one. We've got 1 over 64. Just put in your calculator, 1 divided by 64, and I get uh, 0.016. It's 5, 6, but I rounded it. And then here I have 1.2 times 10 to the negative 1. Well, that's just moving that decimal over 1 in that direction, right? So I have 0.12. Well, 0.82 is just 0.82. That's convenient, right? It's already in that decimal form. This next one, we've got 4 fifths, right? It's just 4 divided by 5 in your calculator, and you get 0.8. Decimal right? I mean, percent, we just take our debt, whatever the percent is, and we move the decimal two places. So that becomes 0.72. And so now we just look at these numbers and we go, well, what order do they go in? Clearly, this is going to be the lowest one because it has that 0.16. It's over a thousand, right? It's one thousandth. So it's going to be the smallest. And then we've got 0 0.12, 0 0.8, 0 0.72 are the smaller the number, right? This is going to be our 2. Then we've got our 3, our 4, and our 5. These were a lot closer, right? We have 0 0.8 and 0 0.82. 0 0.82 is going to be bigger than 0 0.8.
But we have to write them in the right form. So we know we've got 1 over 64. We have 1.2 times 10 to the negative 1. We have our 3 is 72%. Our four is four fifths. Our five is 0.82, the one that we started with. Who would have thought that the one that was already a decimal would wind up being the biggest number that we had? What if I were to say is, like if I were to give you one, over 64 and I put a circle in it and 72% and I go I want you to fill in the greater than the less than or the greater than equal to or less than equal to what would go in that circle Which one is less than the 1 64th of the 72%? Which one is less? Daniel's saying we got a less than in there. Everyone agree with Daniel? Kind of an easy one I did there, right? Because if you look at our order, when we ordered these, right, 1 64th was the lowest one that we had. So it would definitely be less than the 72 percent you're going to have some like that where you just get two numbers and it's going to ask you is it greater than less than greater than or less than or greater than equal to or less than equal to right and you're just going to have to put them like put them in the same setting usually decimal um, and see which is which we're going to skip four and we are going to skip five and we're going to come down here and we're just going to do the same thing, only this time we're just going from bigger to smaller. So if we look at the 124%, we're going to move the decimal and we're going to get 1.24. All right, our next one's already in decimal force, so we got 12.8. We're not going to change that. 12.23, right? Well, I mean, 12.2, 12, 12, 12, 12 and two thirds. Um, when we put that in decimal form, it's just a division. Excuse me, it's just a division problem, right? And it's going to be 12.6. One thing you should know is that this six repeats. When you have two thirds, that six goes on and on forever and ever and ever and ever. It doesn't end, it just repeats. Um, here we have four to the third power. Well, four times four is 16 and 16 times four is 48, 64, 64. So this one's 64. And then we have 1.24 times 10 squared, which means that because that's a positive, we're moving the decimal this way, two spaces, right? Which gives us 124. And it says we want the biggest first, right? The greatest to the smallest. So my biggest number, clearly, this one's going to be our number one, right? It's the biggest number. Our next is going to be 64. Then we're going to come down here to the 12.8. That's going to be our next biggest number, right? Because it's bigger than 12.6. Then we've got this one, and then we've got this one. And so now we've got the order there, right? And so we know how to write them. The biggest number would be 1.24 times 10 squared. Then it would be 4 to the third. Then it would be. 12.8, which is just 12.8. Uh, then number four would be 12 and two thirds. And number five would be 124%. So pretty easy, right? 
put them all into decimal form, the best closest as you could get, and then just go. If they're asking for biggest to least, do them in that order. If they're asking for the least to the biggest, do them in that order, right? You guys can do this. I have the most confidence in you. I'm not even doing a whole bunch of these. I'm not going to make us do all of these on the notes because you understand the difference between what's bigger and what's smaller, right? I don't need to do a whole bunch of those for you in terms of the notes. I'd rather give you guys the time to work on your worksheet. Let me bring this down for those of you who are still writing. But that's the whole lesson. It is your last lesson of the entire semester. So give yourself a round of applause. You guys made it through a whole semester, even with having to have your teacher changed in the middle of it, right? Um, so everything is already posted in Google Classroom as far as all of that goes, your worksheets there, your notes are there. Try and get it done as quick as you can because I'll have that test posted before the end of the day, probably tomorrow for Delta Math, so you can get a look at it. Don't feel like you got to get it all done. If you have questions about it, ask the questions in class, okay? We're going to have two class periods before you actually have to submit it. So ask your questions so that you can get the grade that you want, okay? That's all I have for you today, so I'm not going to keep you in class this whole time. Let me stop the video.